match any assignment of any field. That's also in my class. Again, we're going to be running before and after advice. So before constructor, after constructor, before method, after method, and then assignment. This join point static part is a, is a keyword for aspect J. And this gives us some information about where we're injecting to. So when we print out here, this join point, this join point static part dot get signature, we have information about the method we're injecting to and the parameters that it's using and the return type. To apply this, we use the AJC command. Uh, if I can find it here. So AJC is quite similar to Java C. You specify a class path. We need to specify the aspect J runtime library on the class path. Other than that, it's the usual class path that we found in the, uh, the run.bat script, right? Point it to our aspect. Give it our uh, target jar file. And we'll write out the new jar file to a new jar file called new admin client. So that's it. It's now created the new client for us with that code inserted all over the binary. We can now run with the aspect. Lots more trace information. OK, this is also just initialization, right? So we haven't done anything on the app. You can see here it's doing, this is a lot of uh, GUI activity, org.jdesktop layout, blah, 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 etc. But here we have the core logic init components, setting something visible, launching the GUI. Same operations, Bob, password. Okay. And let's look at the login method. All right, so we're getting here, get text, uh, gets the username password field. Login method on the client form. Now we see something here that we haven't seen before. That there's an internal field assignment. Client form dot account ID gets the value of null. Then it calls the server side login. Server side returns. Then it sets account ID to some value. Right? Account ID is an internal private field. Uh, there's, an, there's a comparison. And then login on the client is finished. Populate order list, also interesting, because this also calls a server side. Get order IDs on the server side. It returns a list. It then converts a list, probably that one, to an object array. It then calls set list data on a JList control. A JList is a GUI control to hold a list of objects. And it uses an object array. So from this, it's quite clear what's happening on the client. Right? It gets the order IDs from the server side as a list, converts them to array, then sets that array onto the JList control, and you have those order IDs populated in the list, in the list box. So we click on it. Click on something, and we see a lot of activity. Right. So this technique of tracing with aspect J is, I think, the most powerful of the three because it gives you access to internal fields. And Aspect J is an extremely rich programming environment. So you can, be, um, you can be very specific about where you want to insert the code, what you want to see from it, and so on. So we're now into the final stage. We've done the analysis. We understand pretty well what the application is doing. We know which are the server-side methods. We know when it's calling them. We now we don't want to get to the stage where we can call those methods and we can do whatever we want with them. So we can run those three attack scenarios I mentioned right at the start, which is try and subvert the access control, try and view other people's orders, try and perform SQL injection attacks, and then try and perform automated attacks. 
And I'll demonstrate two methods, the injecting the shell and then doing static patching. So a quick intro into two tools, the Java Object Inspector and the Beanshell. JOI is basically a simple um, application used to debug an application. If you don't want to use a debugger, um, say you've got a complex server-side application, you don't want to try and debug that, sort that up in your debugger, you can insert the JOI into it, and the JOI basically just gives you um, a GUI that you can see the fields and you can set field values for primitive types of anything that's in scope. It's very easy to use. You just import it. You call one command, uh, inspector.inspect. You pass it the object you want to inspect, and it will uh, give you a GUI with all those objects fields on it. That's what it looks like. Beanshell. Beanshell is a complete uh, scripting environment for Java. And it's also an interactive uh, shell environment. So it, it provides kind of a superset of the Java language. You can either use strict Java, if you like, or you can use <coughs> excuse me, the uh, simplified Beanshell script, which is a bit, uh, a bit of a shorthand. To start it up, you create a new interpreter. You can then pass in any objects into the shell that you want to have a reference to. So if you have a my object, you can call it my object and pass it to the shell. You can then start up a server in the application. So it'll actually start up two servers. It'll start up a telnet server and a web server within the app. And it doesn't matter what the app is, even if it's an applet, you can start up a web server inside the applet, which in turn serves an applet. This is a telnet server. It's a, well, not very friendly to work in. It doesn't have um, history completion and so on. The HTTP server that it starts up will give you a nice um, little applet and that gives you a, um, an easy to use interactive shell. So you are then inside the application. What the bean shell lets you do is, same as the JOI, it lets you view fields, lets you edit fields, but of course it's a complete shell environment. So you can write scripts, um, you can execute any method, you can instantiate classes, you can basically do whatever you can do in Java in the bean shell. And these are the, the three components we have. We have the bean shell, which gives us an interactive scripting environment. We have the JOI, which is a easy to use GUI for editing fields. And we have aspect J, which gives us the ability to rewrite methods or to insert code into bytecode. So in order to insert these, I want to insert them into the application. Now, two things to bear in mind. Uh, if you want to insert the bean shell or the JOI, you really only want one instance, at least of the bean shell. So you need to find a place uh, in your code that only gets executed once. And also, you want to insert it in a point where you have access to the interesting classes, to the interesting bits that you want to run. So in our case, uh, if we look at the admin client, for example, view orders is the, is the EJB. View orders is the remote interface to the server. So if we have access to view orders, then we can call these methods on the server side. right? So ideally, we want to be inside client form, or at least have a reference to client form. If you go through the trace information, I'm not going to do it now, you'll see that uh, the, the constructor for client form only executes once, right? So we only have one GUI, so a convenient place to insert the, uh, the shell is in the constructor of that GUI. So we know where we want to insert. Now we just need to go and insert it, again, with an aspect. So create a new aspect, interpreter i. We, create, we define the point cut. Where do we want to insert this? It's going to be on the execution of client form .new on the constructor. Right? We want to run it after the constructor executes. Nice thing about after advice is it leaves the rest of the program intact. Right? So if the constructor was doing important initialization or you know, whatever it, it's meant to do for the application, we leave that untouched and that will still run. And we'll inject our code after that. So very simply, we just print out that we're injecting the shell. We start up the interpreter. This again is a, a reserved word. This join point dot get this. 
gives us a reference to where we're injecting. So we're injecting into client form here. This is going to give us a reference to that form, and we're going to call it form. Set accessibility true uh, is basically used for reflection. So if you want to add, uh, access private fields and private methods, usually you can't do that within Java because of the, the scoping rules. It won't let, it'll only let you access public fields and methods. Set accessibility true turns that off. So you can access private fields and methods. Then we're going to start the server on port 7777. Once bean shells injected, we're then going to inject the JOI, might as well. And again, we're going to pass it a reference to the form. So similarly, we'll use the AJC command uh, exactly as we did for the tracing, with the exception uh, where is it? Well, the only addition we have to make to the class path is we just need to insert the bean shell jar and the JOI jar. And the rest stays as is. Okay, so we're going to inject our shell. Done. Now run it. There we go. This is the JOI that has popped up. And as you can see, it will show us all private, protected, and public fields for the form. Here's our form. So we just log in as Bob. So we can see things like the account ID field is this value. And if we wanted to, we can change that value. Right. So just an example, there's a J label field called login message label. I can choose to inspect that again. Remember, you can only change and view primitive types. So it's a complex object. You have to inspect that and then try and change. Um, any of the primitive fields. This has a text property, welcome Bob. So we can change this. And if we redraw the GUI, it's changed, right? So JOI will let us change any arbitrary fields uh, anywhere on this client form. But we're still a bit restricted. We can't call methods. We can only change fields. So it's not, not, the full, uh, not the full show. If you wanted that, we just need to log into our Beanshell instance. Remember, Beanshell has now started up two servers running inside this application. It's running, on, uh, it's running a Telnet server, and it's running this HTTP server over here. Remember, we called, we gave the reference to client form and called it form. So if I print form, there is an object called form in reference here. So I can print form. So we have access to that field as well. OK. So far, so good. But the interesting stuff is going to be in this EJB method, or the, the EJB class. View orders. Remember, view orders exposes all of this functionality. So the first thing, I'll just get a reference to view orders. It's going to be form.vieworders. And remember, view orders is private. The only reason I can access it here is because I set accessibility to true on the, on the bean shell. So we have access to that EJB. Let's try something like ejb.login. Nonsense. So a failed login returns null. 